In this video, we're gonna talk about how to tell if your ex is at the riding the dragon stage of getting back together and what you can do to help them to kind of move past this stage. But first, my name is Clay with Modern Loved Out Life where we help you get the great loving relationship that you're looking for without having to play mind games, without having to play hard to get, and without having to pretend to be someone or something that you are not because you deserve to be loved for the unique, amazing, and wonderful person that you are. And if you agree with me, do me a favor by hitting that thumbs up button. It helps to send a message to YouTube that these are nice videos and that they should show them to more people who want to learn more about how to get their exes through this riding the dragon stage. So help pay it forward, hit that thumbs up button, help me out, help other people out and spread the love. Um, also, we are talking about the five stages your ex goes through in getting back together in this video series. You know, the previous two videos in this series we talked about Wall of Reactants and Test Drive. Now we're obviously talking about Riding the Dragon. And as we keep moving through the series, we'll be talking about the other stages. Um, if you do want to learn more about how to help guide your ex through these stages, please also consider checking out the X Solution program. It is our course on helping you get back together with your X by navigating through these five stages. You can find information on that down in the description box below this video. Okay, so I imagine this is probably going to be one of the most popular videos in this series, potentially rivaled by the next one, which is the crisis point. Um, but okay, so here you are. You think that your ex might be at Riding the Dragon. Let's talk about it. Let's find out about this. So first of all, Riding the Dragon is, of course, the middle uh, stage in the five stages of getting back together. And um, this is most likely where most of your exes are going to find themselves after a normal sort of breakup, you know, not some sort of like high drama breakup where there's lots of, you know, fighting and screaming at each other and stuff like that. That kind of situation, you might find yourself, boom, back in, um, you know, wall of reactants or test drive or something like that. That would make sense if there was a lot of very strongly hurt feelings or something like that. But if you and your ex just had like, okay, yeah, this, this hurts a lot, but you, no, okay, we can break up kind of thing, then most likely they're going to start out at riding the dragon so you, you don't necessarily need to worry about those other two stages, Wall of Reactions and Test Drive, you know, assuming they don't backslide into those. But um, this, is, this is where your ex is going to experience a lot of confusion. You know, they're going to they're gonna be on one hand saying like, yeah, there were lots of problems in our relationship. It, I, that's why we broke up. Um, but they're also going to be feeling some positivity towards you because they still do have some positive experiences with you. There still is some sort of emotional connection with you. So you're going to end up with this hot and cold behavior. Now, um, people will sometimes tell me that, hey, my ex doesn't really show me the hot or they don't really show me the cold. What does that mean? Um, and they can still be at riding the dragon at this point, but they just may not be showing you both of that hot and cold side. You know, sometimes people are like, well, you know, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, so I'm not going to like really be openly emotional about like being warm towards you, or I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like keep it to myself and I'm not gonna be openly um, showing you the cold side of the behavior either. So there can be some of this, either, either both sides or all of it that's sort of suppressed and you have to kind of keep that in mind. But the core thing here is that it's there. there's this confusion. There's this sort of duality of, you know, yes, I feel strongly toward you, but also, yes, there were issues that, that caused us to break up. And yes, I feel hesitation about opening up and getting warmer towards you. So there's this kind of confusion as they sort of waffle back and forth between these two powers that are influencing them. And um, another issue that sometimes people have at this particular point is that they might not be really experiencing a lot of this hot and cold as well, too. Um, and, and they might be experiencing what, what one client recently said to me, um, warm and lukewarm. <laughs> and what this, what this tells me is that either there's some of that suppression happening or that we actually need to kind of expand the comfort zone a little bit. Because sometimes we have this um, we have this uh, uh, comfort zone of things that we are comfortable doing with our ex. And we need to kind of start to find out what the edges of what is okay with them and what is not okay with them are so that we know where the resistance is, where we know where they're going to start to push back against it. You know, it's kind of like being in a dark room. Um, if you're in a dark room and you don't know the layout of the room, you don't know where the walls are. You don't know where the, the footstools are that you can trip over. And so 
yes, you can stay safe by just kind of standing still in the dark, but you're probably not going to make much progress. What makes sense is to kind of feel around the room and get a sense of like, okay, there's a wall over here, there's a chair over here, there's another wall over here, there's a doorway over here. And that's going to tell you kind of the edges of the room. In the same sort of sense, you want to kind of uh, fill out the, the interactions that you have with your ex so you can find out where the points of resistance are, where they start to feel a little bit more uncomfortable interacting with you and where you might start to trigger some of that warm or hot behavior or you might start to trigger some of that cold pullback behavior, okay? And this is going to give us feedback to tell us what we need to focus on, where we need to address things, right? So for example, if a certain thing starts to make them feel uncomfortable, like, you know, maybe physical contact. You know, you might just sort of edge out of that comfort zone, do something like maybe try to hold their hand and just see how they respond to it. If they respond well to it, then okay, your comfort zone maybe just got a little bit bigger. You now know that there's like not a wall in that part portion of the dark room and you know that you can like freely move over there. Um, and that's great. But if you do start to get some resistance, then it's like, okay, we now know that they feel a little bit uncomfortable holding hands. That tells us that, you know, maybe there's something going on there. Maybe they don't feel comfortable kind of having some sort of overt kind of romantic things happening between the two of us. And that means that they're probably more relationship focused as opposed to connection focused, which we've talked about in other videos before on this channel. So I'm not going to belabor it right now. But what we want to do then is sort of shift their attention and their focus down from being relationship focused where they have this sort of like all or nothing like, oh, if we're going to interact, um, it means that we're, you know, going to going to get back together. I don't know if I'm emotionally ready to have that choice of whether we're going to get back together or not. So I'm going to like pull back, create distance, right? And so if we can address that by saying like, hey, I totally get it. Like, I'm not trying to force anything that's not there. I think we should just be friends for the time being. Then we can kind of address that and get past that obstacle. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Sometimes we just need to fill out the, the comfort zone here and kind of see where the edges are of what's comfortable and what's not comfortable for them. And that can kind of give us feedback as to what we need to focus on and what we can do to kind of move past this. Of course, through this whole process of hot and cold behavior, it is absolutely important that you realize that your ex is not doing this intentionally to toy with you or string you along or play games with you. I mean, most likely they're not. They might, if, if you have seen this sort of behavior with them before, you know, when the two of you were together, if you've seen them toy with people, string other people along, play games with them. But, you know, that's that's like a, a, a very slim minority of people, like, really have it in them. Most people are just trying to live the best life that they can, just trying to, you know, do right by others and do good things for themselves. And chances are, if you are experiencing a lot of this hot and cold behavior, it is because your ex is just genuinely confused about where their feelings are towards you and they're just genuinely waffling back and forth because of these two dual forces pulling them in both ways. And so what you want to do is you want to have a little bit of compassion and empathy towards this confusion. Of course, by all means, take a stand for yourself when you need to and, you know, take a stand for your own needs when you need to. Don't totally lose track of that at all. But just understand that you're dealing with a confused person here whose intentions are probably good. They're probably not trying to hurt you. They're probably not trying to string you along. In fact, this whole experience is probably very frustrating for them as well, too, being confused, changing their opinion frequently, back, going back and forth, yo-yoing. You know, it's, it's probably very frustrating for them as well, too. So have a little bit of compassion. Just realize that you are dealing with a confused person and not some sort of person who's intentionally trying to hurt you or string you along or something like that. Um, so that is basically the foundation of the riding the dragon stage is are they confused? Are they experiencing positive interactions with you, but also experiencing some significant reservations or things that could be kind of holding them back? And how might those be expressed? You know, we've already talked about the hot and the cold. We've already talked about how that hot and cold might be suppressed because maybe that's just kind of how they deal with their emotions or maybe part of their personality. And we've also talked about how you sometimes need to kind of expand a little bit more and feel the edges of that room to kind of see where the limits might be, to see where those edges might be so that we know what to focus on. Okay, so that is our video on riding the dragon. If you found this helpful, 
please help me out by hitting that thumbs up button for this video. It does help other people find these videos and it does help other people out there who might be at riding the dragon themselves. So hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel uh, so that you don't miss the next video in this series. And you might also wanna check out this series here on the five stages of getting your ex back or this video right here. And you also might wanna check out that X Solution program course down in the description box. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you in the next video.